Welcome to Nexus Edge, the show that will help you get an edge on your competition. My name is Turd Herder, and I'm your esteemed host of the Nexus Edge. Tonight, in the Chicago studios, I'm joined by Quaylar, the captain of the Season 5 Division E North American Champions, Save the Murlocs. Welcome, Quaylar. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me on. No problem. Anytime. I'm uh, really happy you were able to join me here on Friday night, and... Uh, well, let's just get into it. All so, right, let's do it. Yeah, um, let's 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 start at the very beginning. So, wh- how does your team start? Uh, you know, just just a group of friends. We, we've known each other for a fair amount of time. Uh, you know, we just uh, we met actually. Well, a f- few of us met early high school, some late high school. A couple came on in college, playing uh, playing rugby together. As it happens. But of course, post college, as people's careers develop, you know how it goes. People scatter to the four winds, becoming Texas, adults and things like California, that. exactly. So uh, at that point, uh, esports become a much better touchstone for uh, staying together and competing than does rugby. Absolutely. Now, I gotta ask because I think there's a lot of people out there wondering, where did you guys get the name Save the Murloc? Save the Murloc is a World of Warcraft guild. Uh, Several of our teammates are members. Uh, Its founding and naming predates my involvement with the guild, so I do not know exactly why that was the name. But it's a cause which is near and dear to uh, all of our hearts. Is it a requirement to be uh, a Murloc fan? Oh, it, it, it's an article of faith amongst our team members that, uh, <laughs> that you know, Murlocs need to be first and foremost saved. And then all of the various and sundry equivalent things, preserved, protected, etc. You know how it goes. Are people behind Murlocs on that list? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> not, and not, that, not that we in any way mean to devalue humanity. No, but no, of course. Murlocs are uh, higher on the list, so Numero to speak. Uno. So, um, how was it competing in season five? Was this your first foray into esports, or how yes, did that go yes, down? this was our first competitive heroes of any sort. Uh, to be honest, as a group, we play unranked more than ranked. <laughs> so, even you know, compared to the average player, it may well have been pretty pretty early on in our competitive scene. But you know, I think really uh, at the level we're playing, it's more about you know how well you can you coordinate than actually having particularly good micro skills or or shot calling it's just are you guys working well together so it was fun because we we were by no means the uh, the best team in the division over the course of the season you know we had some wins some losses early i think we were a 500 team for some of the year but we came on strong at the end and well if you win those last few matches there you go champions do you even know what was the uh, your final rank in the regular season I, I think we were the third seed in the playoffs, but so that still I think pretty high though. High, but I think maybe by virtue of a tiebreaker, so, you know, it was sort of the top two teams. Yeah, were up there, and then there was a bit of a gap, and then us and a few other teams were clustered very close. So Got wins it. in our last few regulation uh, regular season matches got us to that solid seed, and then mm-hmm. uh, we really turned it on for the playoffs. Absolutely, let's let's start talking about the playoffs so you're going in we're going to skip all the way to the very end i think that's what the people want well so right. we're in the final match right i guess we're going into the final match what are your thoughts about olaf and the sweaty bandits uh i i i'd commend them in all phases of the match you know they they put up a very a very good showing we lost game one uh it was towers of doom and uh you know we had a reasonably conventional lineup nothing too crazy yeah. Um, and they did as well for the first four picks. And of course, you know, right there with the fifth pick, they lock in, uh, the lost Vikings, their team's namesake, which, <laughs> I, which remember I thought what, was, yes. <laughs> you know, I just, I think even before they locked it in, we said to ourselves in chat, we said, oh man, if they lock in Vikings, we're, we're, we're not going to have a good time of this because we didn't, <laughs> we did not have any, you know, the Zara tool, Li Ming, there right. are some characters who do very well cleaning up the Vikings. Uh, and we did not have any of them. And th- that game really just got away from us from the start because we were constantly saying to ourselves, you know, 
they're winning the altars because of the Vikings. And who, I don't know who it was on their team was playing the Vikings, but he, I don't he remember or she, either. Yeah, they played very well. And we were just sort of constantly saying to ourselves, all right, yeah, they get that altar, but that's okay. We'll do this. Or, oh, they get two out of three right there. But as long as we do yeah. this and you just keep delaying and saying, we'll turn it around. And then, you know, we have eight points left on our core and it's a three altar phase and yeah. we lose the skirmish. And well, what are you going to do? So we were a little dejected at that point, And yeah. we just sort of said to ourselves, well, you know what? They got one on us with like, you know, a very clever sort of tricky play. Let's let's regroup, play our best now. And it won't matter if we play well. And and I'm happy to say that's what happened. Right. And, and you guys go on to win game two and game three. Yes. And then in game <clears throat> four, it's the final mm-hmm. match. Yeah. Dragonshire, I believe. That's correct. And uh, what's. What's going on in your mind? You're getting into the final couple minutes here. Uh, supreme confidence there. You know, having won two in a row, we felt like, you know, they got a great punch in at the start. But now that we've settled in, we've managed to distance ourselves, you know, and, and games two and three were very close. It's not that we were running away with them, but a close victory, you know, feels very good for momentum moving forward. And then game four, uh, we kind of stumbled out of the gate. I, I'm the off laner for our team. I was Alarak. I got picked twice in the first, I think it was maybe three minutes. <laughs> Never a good it was, uh, it was, position to be yeah, in. Yeah, not, not a good start for me. They, they had <laughs> Diablo. They executed some strong ganks. But um, Chris uh, on Dehaka, if I remember the match correctly, yeah. for us in the bot lane, really, really excelled in uh, not a terribly easy matchup for him and they were ganking effectively so he has to be careful but he uh he did very well just holding that bot shrine as much as he possibly could and it's not as though dahaka excels as that he's a good solo laner but he's no irrel in terms of holding a point right, right. Uh, so that allowed us to you know after i got ganked get some camps, get back on the map, win some skirmishes and after that point i don't think we lost an objective during the game not bad. So you guys yeah. win it. What um, what did the team do to celebrate? Oh, we just uh, you know, hang out, hang out in Discord, <laughs> have a few beers, so to speak. Th- those of us who who do live in the same area, yeah, uh, we we got uh, a little bit later. There hang you out, go. you know, just just good times. Watch the um, watch the match vod. We 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 have one guy record it, so we have our comms available. Got it. And, and yeah, it's what, fun. what were the comms like? Were they hectic? Are you guys calm and collected? Is one guy making we, the uh, shots? We tend to be pretty calm and collected. As as a general rule, as the off laner, I'll watch the map and call the macro. Yeah. And Sean, who is our tank, is calling the micro and team yeah. fights because you know he's on the engages. You want your tank shot calling. So that that's usually how we play it. Absolutely. So looking ahead to season six. What are we going to expect from Save the Murloc? First of all, are you guys coming back? Oh, yes. We'll be back. All five main roster members will be back, and I think uh, maybe even a couple more just to have a little more scheduling flexibility, a little more depth. You guys out there putting out uh, team recruitment applications? and uh... Uh, It's it's just you know some, some guys we play with there sort of go. casually. We said, hey, you know, <clears throat> if you went in on the tournament. And we're excited. I, when is it actually that the first round starts? You know, off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that yeah. from the date of recording, the uh, applications are going to end here in about a week. Um, I want to say it's end of February, but don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, that sounds right. I think that's right. Now, what? Um, any changes in like your role, your strategy? Have you guys been hitting the grid lot or the gridiron super hard for the practices? Not, uh, not too much. We don't really practice or scrimmage <laughs> at all formally. I, I, I don't mean perfectly to sound okay. You guys glib. are the champs, North American yeah, Division yeah. E champs. I don't mean to sound glib, but we just sort of, you know, if someone's on, maybe place some unranked or even yeah. ranked, or go into quick match and have a fun comp, something like that. So, yeah. well, you know, we'll ramp up and play a little more in the lead up to the season. Shake off the rust. Now, I got one question, and this is a an issue near and dear to my heart. Um, okay. What are you guys doing to improve your spray count? 
Uh, we got 45 sprays for the whole team for the whole uh, season. Really? Is it that little? It's 45. You had three. Oh, boy. Really? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I got stats of the sport I... <laughs> right in front of me, man. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I promise we, I will have more. Not that that's much of a statement, but I will have four sprays or more this season. There you go. Those are goals. Next season, I, season I, six goals. It's not easy to measure, but I do feel like we B-step a lot. I My records are so, showing zero B-steps. Hmm. I think you've right. <laughs> got a lot of work. Gotta well, get, you know we'll, what? Maybe you've got to have practice. That. Where I don't, oh man, were we even really the champs at this point? These these <laughs> these statistics are damning. This might be like more of a division D championship team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna spray. We're gonna be step. We're going to taunt. We're gonna do everything in our power to increase those statistics because we basically have two seasons worth of spraying to make up for. Uh, there you go. Already, that's all the time we have today, folks. I would like to thank our guest, Quelar. Thank you for having me. And uh, this is Turd Herder saying adios, amigos. And remember to stay safe in the Nexus and take your hats to the edge.